This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this week's episode, Jonathan is taking a look at the weird and wacky guns of multiplayer shooter Overwatch 2. God, this game really has some wacky, wacky stuff. Uh, so the closest thing I could think of for this is this. It happens to be one of our rather nice 18th century blunderbusses from our collection here at the Royal Armouries. If there are any other guns, games, or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. And if you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, let's take a look at the weapons of Overwatch 2. Right, this is an intriguing gun. Quite a nice looking design. Mm, well, most notably, it has a, a, a dual magazine, as in a, a, a feed device that has two different types of ammunition in it. Kinetic ammunition, the conventional projectile bullet stuff, in the front half, and then you've got uh, similar to something like 40 millimeter grenades in the back half. Now, I'm trying to think if there are any parallels for that. Not like this, I don't think. Now, good reason for that is that it would make the device extremely heavy and complicated and expensive. And if you've fired all of your rifle ammunition, but you've still got all your grenade ammunition, but you really don't want to fire that, you're going to have to swap the magazine. And you can only carry so many of these things if this was real life, which is not. Fun and intriguing, not, I don't think, practical. We've seen attempts at uh, dual weapons many times. The OICW brings to mind where you have, uh, or more conventionally, uh, something like a, an M16 with, a, with an M203 on it. So you get your two types of ammunition on the same gun. That's fine, albeit can be a bit heavy and bulky. To try to integrate them any further seems to not be the way forward because every time they try to do it, it goes wrong. It makes it too big, too heavy, too expensive. Okay, hey, I realise going into this that we're looking very much at science fiction fantasy, I suppose you'd call it. So this thing is not, doesn't really resemble anything that we have. Bit of a weird shape as well. It appears to be some sort of a cartridge firearm, not, a, not an energy weapon or compressed gas or something. Which you might expect that it was because this thing shoots some sort of darts. Or in fact, syringes really, because as I can see from that uh, gameplay, it's doing damage to enemies, but it's healing friendlies. So the trigger's weird. We do get sliding or, or pivoting but blocky triggers, which I'm not sure which this is supposed to be, but it, it looks more like a power tool button. And you might think, well, you know, futuristic setting, wouldn't we have electrically ignited ammunition and electrical triggers? Well, it's been tried. So far it has yet to stick. And part of that is the lack of feedback. You have to have a certain amount of responsiveness from, from, from the trigger. It has to you, have to you have to be able to feel when it's about to break. You know, often the, often the, the phrase is, it's like snapping a piece of, you know, like a slide, a microscope slide of glass or something. Or should be, for, for a crisp, accurate trigger that disturbs the gun as little as possible. A button is actually, if you think about it, not very precise. You don't quite know when it's gonna contact, which I suppose for training might be okay, but for precision shooters who want to know exactly when that firing pin's gonna be released, it's not very good. We also have no trigger guard, which is not a great thing for safety. Next gun up is a futuristic looking lever action. It's got a loading gate on the left side, not the right side. That's an interesting point actually. If we were designing a lever action from scratch with a loading gate, would we put it on the left side now? Because it's not standard sort of tactical drills now tend to dictate that you don't take your firing hand off the grip. A loading gate on the left side might make sense. Overall design, very blocky, very stylized. But it's, it does have a sort of Old West callback to the design with the brass and wood. Operation-wise, uh, there doesn't appear to be a fudge here where it magically goes semi or fully automatic. Having said that, when it's at the hip, as it were, the uh, character is operating it super fast. Now, if you go and watch some cowboy action shooting on, on the internet or wherever, they will run these things so fast. They have had the component parts polished to an inch of their lives. They, they'll have a, a protective, protective wrap on the, on the lever so their knuckles don't get destroyed or their, their finger bones don't get bruised. And they'll practice very, very hard and even use reduced power cartridges and they will um, slam it like it's a, like a semi-auto. Very, very impressive 
and actually somewhat possible. Right, another take on the Magnum Revolver here. It's got the faceted cylinder and maybe general reminiscence of the Kiapa Rhino or a Mataba or something, but not close enough really to, to say that it's either of those. It's its own thing. Very stylized, of course. Of course, I'm looking at it thinking, how would this thing work? The swing out cylinder's fair enough, and we get, we get this sort of classic flick of the wrist to shut the cylinder. And the bit that's throwing me off is the hammer, which sort of flaps around but doesn't seem to be connected to the trigger. Not as though pulling through on the trigger is cocking the hammer, I don't think. I think the gun just fires and in recoil the hammer flaps back and forth. This revolver does sort of, I hate this expression, but speak to um, a real aspect of revolver. It's something called a recoil shield. So, uh, I happen to have here, uh, just lying around, a Smith & Wesson Model 29 revolver, 44 Magnum, and you'll see that it has what, what's typically known as a recoil shield, these semi-circular flanges either side of the frame that cover the back of the cylinder when it's shut. Now that's not just for aesthetic purposes, it's called a recoil shield because it shields against rounds getting chucked out the back of the cylinder under recoil. Now this has just enough <laughs> of a sort of recoil lug on the side to stop the cartridges coming out, but they, it looks like there'd be enough room for them to try to come out, more so than on a real revolver where there's, the gap is not much bigger than the rim of the cartridge. So sometimes totally fictional things can spark you thinking about real world firearms. Okay, that's fun. So, very much a Western vibe to certain characters and their guns, at least. We've got a, a special ability here with a... So, somehow the Stetson is um, coming into shot there. There's a, a line of dialogue, particular sort of focus view, and a, a tumbleweed comes past. So, obviously, a bit, a bit like Red Dead Redemption's Dead Eye mode, but even more stylized and inspired by the Westerns, where the hero gunfighter isn't is it a dead eye, and is able to make accurate shots at distance, uh, in this case a headshot. Okay, this one is a challenge for me, I think. Very unusual design. It looks to have a sort of a quite an ordinary record or even gas-operated shotgun bolt in it, visible on the right hand side, and then weird lever arms and some sort of mechanism that is working that bolt back and forth, and I'm not sure there's even room for that. There's an under barrel tube type magazine that seems to rotate. Now the, uh, the reason an under barrel tube magazine would rotate is to feed pistol cartridges like the PP-19 Bison magazine. That's not what this is, this is more like a shotgun tube magazine, so I'd, uh, the rotation seems to just be for interest's sake. And I can't see how you get the rounds into the receiver. There's a spike on the front of that rib there for a front sight, which is better than nothing, but there's a, cor there's a corresponding spike on the back of the gun, which doesn't make a lot of sense, other than if you were trying to, to try to hit someone with it, I suppose. But it certainly doesn't, having two sight posts to line up isn't massively helpful. There's a reason why you normally have a, an aperture or a notch or something to line them up in. So I suppose conceptually, it's a combination of a Magnum revolver and a lever action to make a sort of massive pan cannon type pistol that's pretty unique actually. Wow, well, you definitely can't say that this game doesn't have some creative guns, that's for sure. Uh, we've got a, a shift, uh, manual gear stick shifter knob on the top there for, a, for a, a cocking lever. A big box magazine feeding what kind of looks like, I'm not sure if they're meant to be some sort of sport ball. But they, whatever they are, they're a hard, shiny material, and they're then getting shoved down a barrel that has some really deep rifling. Intriguingly, for me anyway, that's what's called, or looks like, what's called ratchet rifling. Ratchet rifling. These are not lead, they're not copper jacketed, they're not going to be gripped by those rifling grooves. They're just going to 
sort of rattle down along the grooves and not really get spun in a way that's going to give you any sort of stability. You can have round projectiles that are spin stabilized, of course, throwing a cricket ball is, is spin stabilizing it. So that's not the problem. The problem is um, hard metal or whatever they're made from is not going to be soft enough to be gripped by the rifle. Of course, the game doesn't care about that. As to how it works, there's, there's a, a big arm on the side with a some sort of repurposed I don't know, radio control car tire or something on it. And that, when the trigger is pulled, that is brought into contact with these projectiles and they're shoved down the barrel. So the barrel's there to sort of steer them. This is reminiscent of some toy dart guns. Some of them use opposing electrically spun discs to fling the darts rather than compressed air that's then released to puff them out. And so it's actually reminiscent of a toy gun more than anything else. Right, this game really has some fun and interesting takes on some pretty tired and worn out game gun ideas. I mean that to sound positive. <laughs> this is a, it's a rocket launcher, obviously. They're quite small, small diameter missiles, rockets. What it reminds me of more so than anything is a rotary cruise missile launcher on something like a B-52 bomber. It's in the bomb, what used to be the bomb bay, and now it, it rotates one of the missiles. I think they think they drop and then they, then they ignite, and then the next one it rotates into position, drop, launch. So a little bit like that. I wonder if that was the inspiration. Amusingly, it has the words flight direction with an arrow so that you don't try to put your sort of clip of rockets in the wrong way around. Very stylized design, of course, with uh, almost a sort of, I don't know, uh, ancient Egyptian-esque vibe to it. All right, we're getting a little bit more wacky, I think, even than the stuff I've seen so far. We have a pair of sort of hand cannon type pistols, which appear to have two barrels, but fire four rounds each. So thinking about how that might work, there are super superimposed loads back in the muzzle loading era. And then even with, there was an Australian company called Metal Storm who came up with a grenade launcher system that had stacked rounds in the barrel. So you could actually have two rounds stacked in each barrel. Front one fires first, obviously, and then the second. Not actually as wacky as it looks. What is wacky, of course, is throwing your guns away and magically pulling out two identical ones. These look a bit too expensive and fancy for you to be able to carry more than a few. This is something that's known um, known in the trade, as it were, as the New York Reload, which I think comes from a New York police detective, whose uh, idea for a reload back in the day of revolvers, I think, was when you fire just six shots, you literally throw it to the ground and you draw your backup gun. So that's, that's where that idea comes from. This game really has some wacky, wacky stuff. Uh, so the closest thing I could think of for this is this. It happens to be one of our rather nice 18th century blunderbusses from our collection here at the Royal Armouries. The main thing that makes it a blunderbuss is that flared barrel. Uh, now, having, having said that this is similar, it's only sim similar in principle. This thing, well, it looks to have two barrels, but at the same time, a handful of junk is getting shoved in. And I've seen two fire modes, one where it just blasts out at like a shotgun pattern but of junk, and another where the ball of junk is fired almost like a shotgun slug, but breaks up, or, or it causes like splash damage effectively. Which I suppose reflects, well, modern shotgun ammunition can be shot or it can be slug. Back in the day, you would build your load essentially in the breech of the gun from the muzzle. Within reason, <laughs> you could put anything in there. And that's that's what we're seeing here. It's, it's harking back to the classic blunderbuss myth that they were for putting nails and stones and bits of glass in. Now, the, re the reason I grabbed this, this is partly an excuse to show the collection to you, as I'm sure you know by now. So this is by T. Hatcher, and that name is actually wrapped up in a rather nice little bit of engraving of the Tower of London, which is one of our museum sites. This is a very classic, it's an iconic historic firearm. Uh, we have a, a very good collection of them here. A little bit far removed from, from what I'm seeing here. This is looking a little bit more, I don't know if grounded in reality is the right phrase to use, but uh, 
based a bit more so on stuff that we know. And it does bring to mind this. So this is the M16A1. So this is vaguely reminiscent of that, channeled through, I don't know, a Nerf gun or something. There's a folding grip underneath that, that's way off. The handguard actually almost looks like, a little bit like a Cricutini quad rail, but not really. They're not, they're certainly not aping this classic perforated handguard from the M16A1 era, but stock looks a bit more like the carbine butt stock, but you really have to squint to even see that. But it does have the, the sling loop, a uh, bit on the top. So it's maybe more of an M4 with a grenade launcher fitted, but we'll see it in action. KIA. Okay, some unexpected action there. So the carrying handle slides forward for some reason for reloading. So the magazine does not go into the bottom of the gun as on the, uh, the classic AR. And the barrel recoils, suggesting that it's somehow recoil operated. Now as for the under barrel thingamy, uh, it is reminiscent of a 203. It's more like some sort of rocket setup. Uh, there are development efforts toward under barrel, not so much rockets, but guided munitions. So you'd have a, the same effect as a, an under barrel grenade, but it would guide itself to a target that you select for it. I think we're a way off that, but um, it, it does make some sense to have essentially a, a miniature anti-structure munition kind of weapon, you know, almost like a, a mini RPG, as opposed to a mini M79 on your, on your rifle. Right, this thing does pretty closely, for a science fiction take, resemble the MP7. Right, it's even got a hint of this rear portion of the receiver in which the sliding stock slides, as it were. This sort of reinforced bit of polymer at the rear. It's not the same, but it's sort of reminiscent. What's very reminiscent for me is this front cap here. Basically like a stopper that goes in the front of the receiver, just to sort of close it up and help keep your fingers away from the hot barrel. So it's not really required, you could sort of pop that off and it, it wouldn't cause any major problems. But it is, it does lend the MP7 something of its increasingly classic thing, look. And it's there on this gun, it's, in fact it's prominent, it's enlarged. There's some device on the left hand side that almost looks like a laser module or something, so that would be conveying uh, data from the, from the rear of the gun to the front, so I'm expecting something computery to go on. It might just be decoration. Let's have a look. Yeah, we've definitely got the, the high rate of fire of the MP7. It's ejecting cartridge cases very perpendicular to the side of the gun, which is a bit of an old-fashioned video game mistake. The, the ribbon cable on the side is just kind of flapping around. I haven't seen it do anything yet, but this view does make me realize just how much that weird thing on the back is a representation of the butt plate in the closed position on the MP7. So when you're holding it like this, it really does look very similar. Right, these, these are all very interesting in their design. This is not very realistic. Won't surprise you to hear me say that. But it's, uh, I suppose it's a take on the revolver cylinder slash speed loader system of a cylinder of some sort of ammunition. And there's a hint of like a, some sort of ratcheting mechanism doesn't, uh, on the back of the, let's call it a clip. And it's, it's locked into place on the feed cover, which is then closed to chamber the clip chamber? <laughs> Not even really the right word. Load the clip. And then uh, so a mechanic I've seen before where hit fire is automatic and then you use your scope and it's somehow using all of the ammunition from that device at once to give you a more powerful single shot. Makes lots of gameplay sense. I don't think it makes much firearm sense. There will be no next time. So that's my review, guys, of the guns of Overwatch 2. A little wary of that one, to be honest, but there's an awful lot of interesting stuff going on. Join us again next time. You can always go and check out uh, Royal Armoury's YouTube channel if you'd like. There's a lot of me on there. As ever, please come and visit one of our three museum sites if you can. And if you can't, we have um, some digital stuff that you can check out via our website. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.